Good evening, my friends. Uh, what I thought I would do a quick video of tonight is show you the difference between the various telescope tracking rates. You can have the telescope track at either the sidereal rate, in which case stars are kept centered in the field of view, or you can have it set to a lunar tracking rate, in which case it follows the moon's speed through the sky, which is slightly different. Because remember, the moon moves approximately 15 degrees per day, depending on where it's at on its orbit. And so it moves against the background stars. And each night, it occults many thousands, depending on how you want to count it and how faint you want to go, millions of stars. And some of them that it's going to cover up are visible on the screen here. Uh, the moon is moving in this case, in this field of view, it's going to be moving down to the left and it's going to cover up this star in the lower right hand corner or excuse me, lower left hand corner which is the double star Seven Leonis in the constellation Leo and there are some other fainter background stars visible here and that's going to occur about an hour and 15 minutes from now so in the course of an hour and 15 minutes it's going to travel that distance and as it gets closer to this star here I'm going to zoom in on the edge of the moon and we're going to watch it occult that star or cover it up and you'll see that the star disappears instantly from one frame to the next uh, I've got the refresh rate set now at one second uh, I might turn it up a little bit, but there's some, there'll be some noise and some hot pixels come on, but I think we can deal with that. And so as it gets closer to that star, I will zoom in on it. Uh, but first, let's demonstrate what ha what how fast the sky moves if you turn the telescope tracking off altogether. I'm going to center the moon a bit better here. Of course, I always go the wrong way first. All right. Now let's turn that view down. All right. There's the moon. You can see on the screen here, under the Rate Settings menu, this is what I control the telescope with. This is the Astrophysics Command Center. And under the Tracking Rate, I have my choice of Sidereal, Lunar, which it is currently set at, Solar, because the Sun, too, does move one approximately one degree per day across the sky, so it would move against background objects as well and zero, which will turn tracking off altogether. Now when I hit apply here, you're going to see the moon drift quickly out of the field of view. That motion is entirely due to the Earth's rotation. That's what the zero set the tracking rate. And you can see here in the lower right corner as it drifts it's drifting in right ascension only because this is an equatorial mount and the declination will stay the same. It's the right ascension axis that is no longer tracking the stars. Which again proves that an equatorial mount can track these objects using its single axis of rotation. Now if I turn back on the lunar tracking rate, the motion stops immediately. And you'll notice now that it's tracking, the altitude and azimuth values are changing. That's because it's 
currently moving slowly across the mount is currently pointing to different locations in the sky as these objects slowly rotate through the sky. Again, if I turn the tracking right off, and notice the altitude and azimuth stays virtually frozen. And the right ascension changes. If I turn lunar tracking back on, the right ascension stays the same, the declination stays the same and the altitude and azimuth changes. Now I say the right ascension stays the same. It doesn't stay exactly the same because the moon is not traveling at the same rate as the background stars. So the right ascension is slowly increasing as the moon moves from west to east across the sky. If I change the tracking rate to sidereal Now the right ascension will stay frozen. Now if you remember there was a, f a faint star. Right here, down below the moon. When that gets close to the edge of the moon, I'll come back and I'll show the difference between the sidereal rate and the lunar rate. When I switch from one to the other you'll see either the star moving closer to the moon because I'm on the lunar tracking rate and the moon is being held in a fixed position or when I switch to the sidereal rate the star will stay in a fixed position and the moon will slowly appear to be creeping toward it. So when that gets closer I'll be back and set that up. All right, we're getting close to that star being covered up by the moon here. So I'm gonna turn up the, uh, the exposure time here so we can see the little star. Okay, set for one second, exposure time. And there's the star. Now with the time set for one second, you can see each step the moon is going to appear to be approaching the star because I have the tracking rate for sidere set for sidereal which means it's holding the star in a fixed position but the moon is moving against the background stars and hence is creeping slowly towards it and if I don't move the pointer you'll see the edge of the moon slowly overtake the cursor So while that's not a fast rate, that is the speed at which the moon is constantly moving through the sky. You can see the right ascension on the lower right corner is held fixed right here. Because again, I'm tracking at the sidereal rate. Now watch when I switch to the lunar rate. Instead of the moon appearing to creep toward this star, it's going to flip around and it's going to appear like the star is moving toward the moon and you'll see this right ascension number slowly changing because it will be the moon that the drive is holding in a fixed position but the moon is slowly moving in right ascension across the sky and it is slowly moving in declination as well however uh, that value changes much less over the course of one day so here we go, we're going to set it to the lunar tracking rate and you'll see the moon's edge freeze and the star move back towards it. Put the pointer right on the star.
So again, the moon is now in a fixed position, and it's the star that appears to be creeping towards it. And again, if I turn the tracking rate completely to zero, you're going to see this thing whiz out of the field of view. So let's go back to the lunar rate. I'll adjust it carefully back to roughly where it was. Let's zoom in a little more. And I know there's a lot of noise in this image, but that's a very faint star against a very bright background. And if I turn down the gain too much, you lose sight of both. So I'm going to probably let this speed up a bit. I'll fast forward it. And then when I come back, I'll. When the star gets right to the edge, I'll go back to real time and we'll watch it disappear. Alright, it's getting pretty close. I can also turn on... This is my Sky Tools Interactive Atlas. This is set to update about every 10 seconds. That is star SAO 98645, in case you were wondering. A magnitude 9.1 star in Leo. So here we go. It's about to be covered up. And when it goes, it goes instantly which is proof that the star is not a, an infinitesimally small point source, but also that the moon has no atmosphere, because if it did, the star would gradually fade out. And there it goes. And let's see if the interactive atlas there in the corner is nearly as accurate. Yeah. You notice that the, uh, the marker shifted by about one pixel because the marker is actually bigger than the star is. So that in itself is a testament to how accurately these planetarium programs are in making these predictions. And that star was occulted at about uh, 1201, April 24. So, if we zoom back out, the next one coming up to be occulted is SAO 98651. Slightly fainter, but we've got about 50 minutes to go before 7 Leonis is covered up. So I will be back approximately for that one. Now that's a much brighter star. So that will be a lot more easily visible. In fact, it's already visible if we uh, pan over here a ways. Seven Leonis. Let's 
the star right down here in the corner. And at approximately the same time, it's going to be occulting these two SAO stars. But this will be the good one, because it's magnitude 6, which is almost bright enough to see with your naked eye from a dark spot. And it's a double star of 41 arc seconds separation there. So, back in a while. All right, we're about 15 minutes away from the occultation of seven Leonis. I'm going to leave the image and the scope on sidereal rate right now, so the moon will close in and cover up. I'm going to let it cover up these upper two stars, these two SAO stars. That's these two right here. They'll get occulted first, and then a few minutes later, Seven Leonis will, and I'll zoom in on Seven Leonis, and I'm going to switch it to the lunar tracking rate so that it will be Seven Leonis that appears to move into the moon. So as this gets close, I will zoom in on the two SAOs and let the moon cover them up, and I'll zoom back out and down here on Seven Leonis, and I'll change the tracking rate, and the stars will appear to move behind the moon. All right, time for the big show. And I'm going to switch the tracking rate to lunar. So now it's going to be the, the moon will be held in position, and it will be the stars that appear to move toward the moon. There we go. That's about as good as we're going to get for a view. I've adjusted it to a half second update rate just to get a little finer resolution on how fast that star disappears. Should be coming up in about two minutes. In fact, you know what, let's zoom in even more and crank up the speed. Doesn't look very good. We'll stick with what works. Okay, here it comes. We're 
Or should I say, there it goes. Poof. I'm sorry. That's cool every time I see it. <laughs> and now, his little companion star, 41 arc seconds away from it, will follow right behind. as well. So thank you for watching and uh, as I've said before it's good evidence if nothing else that uh, yes we really can predict these things with extreme accuracy. And that the drive rate settings on these telescopes do matter. So have a good night and thank you very much. See you next time.